What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another Lumion video for you today. So um, I'm really excited to make this video. Yesterday the newest version of Lumion, Lumion 10, came out. So I wanted to go through and talk about some of the new features, some of the things you can do with the new version of Lumion. First of all, I apologize. I'm a little bit under the weather right now, so hopefully my voice doesn't make this completely unwatchable. If it does, I'll remake the video and I start feeling better. But I wanted to go ahead and go through the features because I'm really excited about this new release. So the other thing is I'm going to do a high level summary of these features. There's a lot of new things in Lumion 10 and uh, I want to kind of start going through them. I will be doing in-depth tutorials on the new features on my rendering channel, um, the rendering essentials, which I will link to in the notes down below. So if you're interested in more in-depth stuff about these new features, make sure to subscribe over on that channel. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can see a summary of all of the features on Lumion's website on the What's New page. I will link to this in the notes down below. This basically lists out all of the different features that they have in here, as well as some videos they've made of how to use those different features. So the other thing is some of these are pro only, and I will try to point those out as we go, but I wanted to make sure you were aware that some of these are only version are available on the pro version of Lumion. All right, so feature one is the high quality preview. So one of the things about working inside of Lumion is when you're first setting up your scene sometimes you have to move around and you kind of have to guess a little bit as to what your final image is going to look like with the lighting and everything else so some of the features like uh, hyperlight some of those other things don't necessarily show up as much inside of this pane so what ended up happening is you ended up having to go through and do like a quick test render and things like that well Lumion has added a new feature if you look down here in the lower left hand corner that says click inside the preview window to update and so what that means is that means that you can click right here here, and this will actually give you a quick preview of what your image is going to look like. So you can see how as I fly around, as I move over here, like let's say I change my view to something like this right here, and I wanted to kind of preview what this was going to look like. I can click in here, and this will give me a preview of what my rendering is going to look like. So this is really great for previewing what things are going to be without having to go through and do an actual render every time you want to do this. The other nice thing about this is it seems to move pretty seamlessly out of that. So you can see how I can click whenever I want to in order to do that test render and then as soon as I click and hold my mouse it goes back into preview mode. So it seems to be a pretty lightweight way to preview those different images um, inside of Lumion. So feature two was the addition of some fine detailed nature models. These fine detail models are basically super high polygon, high detail plants designed for close up views. And so basically what these are is if you bring these in, these are actually designed to be in kind of the foreground of your image. And the thing with these, and you can see how there's a little note down here, is it says that they will make your scene heavier and they can slow down Lumion. So these are actually designed to uh, be super high polygon and super detailed so you can put them in like the foreground of your images so like if we were to render this out for example or if we were to preview this if I click in here you can see how this is going to look a lot better than your standard models are going to because of the level of detail involved in these models however the trade-off on this is that these will really slow down your renderings because they're so high polygon so it's something where you don't want to put them in the background um, you're better off having one or two in the foreground foreground and just rendering those out. You might even want to put them on their own layer to turn them off when you're not using them to keep your performance level high. But it does give you the ability to really kind of zoom in um, on these higher detail models and uh, incorporate them as a part of your image that you're creating. So the third feature that I'm really excited about is the addition of um, materials with displacement maps associated with them. So if you go into your material library now and you look, there are now different materials that have this little D next to them. Well, what the D indicates is that indicates that these have displacement maps associated with them. Displacement maps are maps that actually move the geometry inside of your rendering, so they're really good for creating like depth on different objects. So, you know, previously we've always had normal maps, but now with displacement maps, you can see how what these are going to do is this actually uses those maps in order to make this more 3D. So you can see if I drag this all the way to the right and turn the displacement 
off, this just gives us kind of a flat look. And previously what we could do is we could use a normal map to make it look bumpy. Well, for the objects with displacement associated with them, you can see how this actually uses this map in order to create depth um, on this material. So what this does is this really gives us more realistic materials than we had before. So another example is if we go out into our street and we look at this asphalt material, this has a displacement map associated with it. And so you can see how if you get really close to it, um, this is actually, this the cracks and everything else in here are actually here in 3D. So this isn't just flat with the material applied to it anymore. This actually shows us the depth and uses those displacement maps in order to make this look more realistic. So I will note you can't load custom displacement maps in at the moment. It's just the materials contained inside of the library. That may be something that changes in the future, but for the moment, you're limited to the displacement maps that are shipped with the materials inside of Lumion. All right, so another new feature that they've added is the nighttime real skies. So um, the nighttime real skies is another collection of real skies. And by the way, the real skies are a pro only version. But if you click in here, you now have a whole new collection of skies just for night. So basically what we had in the past is we had a collection of real skies that went all the way through like sunset, but you were kind of out of luck if you wanted to create a night scene. Well, now what we have is we have these night HDRI images that still kind of cast light which is great. You can see how this is like casting light and we're getting shadows in here, but they're actually designed for nighttime scenes. So we can actually use this to light our scene um, in the evening. There are five new nighttime real skies right now, and I'm really kind of excited to see what people can do because it allows you to create a different kind of nighttime render than you could generate before. So another thing you might find a little bit different is when you go into the effects pane, um, you might look at this and think that they've reduced the number of effects available, but actually all you have to do is just click on the show all feature, and then you get this new um, set of tabs in here to find your different effects. So those are in here. They've just kind of changed the way that's organized. Um, the next feature that they added and this is a pro only as well, is the Aurora Borealis. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to add the Aurora Borealis in the background. So you can see how you can use this in order to add that. And so there's a limited number of times when that's going to be something that you're actually going to use. Um, it does work in video as well, but for those times, it's really an interesting style choice that you can use in order to, uh, in order to add that Aurora Borealis in the background. All right, so paint placement is a new mode that they've added in order to let you quickly add objects into your background. So if you remember previously, you had a number of different options in here. You had the mass placement, the cluster placement, and the single placement. Well, they've added a new version called paint placement that allows you to select a different kind of tree and uh, paint that into your background. So this is especially helpful if you have like mountains or something like that. But basically what you do is you just select one kind of tree, whatever that might be and then you can click and drag this in order to add trees in a location so this is a really fast way to paint trees into your background um, like I said especially helpful for like mountains and things like that but you can also adjust the density in order to add these in your background really quickly if you just want to add one kind of a tree and if you look at these you'll notice that they are being brought in here um, at kind of random sizes so they're not just all being brought in at the same size and rotation so this is a really easy way to quickly add context in here. You can also use this to erase out the object. So if you decide that you don't want something in here, you can use the erase function in order to remove that. So I'm excited about this, um, especially for my renderings that have mountains in the background, just to be able to add a whole bunch of trees without having to go through the brain damage of setting up the cluster placement tool and clicking a million times or anything like that. So another new feature they've added is photo matching. And I will tell you, I have not had a chance to play around with this one yet, but basically what this one does and you can find more out you can find out more about it on the Lumion what's new page but it allows you to take your rendered image and match it to a photo in order to place your uh, place your image in with some actual photo context so this could be really valuable for if you want to uh, see what a building's gonna look like in a neighborhood like this one right here um, or something like that this is a really great feature for being able to do that I will be putting out a tutorial on that in the future I just haven't had a chance to do any 
anything with it yet. All right, so another feature, and this is one that I'm really excited about because it really gives you the ability to bring in better geographical context, is they've added the ability, the ability to add in height maps to your OpenStreetMap data. So like for example, um, Castle Rock is right up the road from where I live. Well, they've added the option right here to click on this. It says download height maps. And so if you do that, what that's gonna allow you to do is that's gonna allow you to bring in your geographical context and it's actually going to build your city or your location using those height maps. So if you remember before, everything you brought in from OpenStreetMap was very flat and uh, it was just kind of this big flat space. Well, now what this will do is this will bring in that OpenStreetMap data and uh, you can use that data in order to create actual like 3D hills and other things like that. But this is something I'm really excited about because um, before, if you wanted this to be in any kind of 3D, there were a whole bunch of workarounds you had to do. Well, now you can just click that little button to import height maps and you can get a 3D version of your terrain from OpenStreetMap. So AI Artist Styles is an interesting addition here. Basically what it does, and you can find it in your effects, make sure you click Show All, and then under Artistic 2, there's an option for AI Artist Styles. And uh, this is an interesting feature to me. Basically what it does is it will take your image and it will use AI in order to uh, redo your image in the style of like a famous painter. So like for example, if you like Monet, well what this will do is this will create an output using Monet. So you start a new camera view, you add this in, and this will actually create an output that looks like Monet painted it. And so basically what you do is you just apply the style. And for this one, you can't preview it. You actually have to render it. So if we render this, what this will do is this won't really show you a preview. What it's going to do is it's going to work in the background and it's actually applying its AI algorithm to this. And then it'll export a rendering in that style. And so you can see how basically what this does is this goes through here and this takes everything that was in here as if it was a Monet style painting. So this is an interesting feature to me. I don't know if people are going to get a whole lot of use out of this or not. I'm really interested to see, but I really like that people are trying to find ways to incorporate AI into the different exports that you can create in rendering programs now. So they've also added a number of different objects in the content library. I have not had a chance to go through and play around with these yet, but I love that Lumion is always adding new models into their library and they're always really high quality models. So note that the 364 is a pro version um, edition. There's 104 in the normal version. So depending on what version you get, you're going to have a different number of these, but I am really excited that they're adding these in here. And so they have a list down here of what those are, including like uh, nature and vehicles and other things like that. You can see those on the what's new page. So in addition to the new models, they've also added 34 new materials as well as adding displacement mapping to 133 of the current materials. So those current materials with the displacement mapping, I think that's going to be a huge deal for people's renders. Um, you can see how with these rocks right here, they just look more rough and more 3D than they did before. So I think it's really going to change the way that people can render things inside of Lumion. I'm really excited about that displacement mapping being added to those materials. All right, so one of the things that's been hugely frustrating in the past with Lumion is uh, when you first bring in a model, sometimes your grass will show through like this. And so what you've had to do before is you've had to go through and you've had to paint this out. Or if you have like a pool or something like that, you actually have to go through and actually like adjust the ground down so that the pool will actually go down into your ground. You won't have landscape running across that. Well, they've added a new feature in here into the utilities functions called the landscape cutter. And so what the landscape cutter will do, if you select that, you see how this says cut right here. So if you click in here, you can add up to two landscape cutters. And basically what they'll do is they'll cut out the landscape in the area that you select. So you can see how wherever I put this landscape cutter, it's no longer adding the landscape in here anymore, meaning I can tell it to exclude all the grass and stuff in the area that I select. So in addition to that, that'll also cut out the ground if you have like a pool or something like that. Um, so it's something that's really helpful. Um, and I think it's something that's kind of overdue and I'm really excited to see it. You can just use that in order to exclude the landscape in the area that you select. 
So another improvement they've added for the movie function is they've added the ability to set if your uh, images ease in or out. So you can see how if I go into my movies section and I double click on a clip, there's now these two buttons here um, that allow you to set if this eases in and out or not. So basically what that means is that sets if when your animation starts, if this uh, accelerates into that animation and then has kind of a linear movement and then decelerates at the end. So if you watch this with this on, it starts to slow down a little bit faster. So it's kind of a style thing where on the other hand, if you have the linear in here, that means your camera is just going to move at a constant rate the entire time. So really what that does is that allows you to set if your camera is going to accelerate a little bit at the beginning. So it'll start slow and then accelerate and uh, kind of decelerate at the end. It's kind of a stylistic thing uh, as opposed to just having that be linear and the same speed across the entire image. And then finally, there's been a number of different things that have been changed from a like overall standpoint. One of the things that I like about this newer version is I like the way the tabs look now for the different versions. So you can see how, or the different layers. So they've got these bigger tabs in here now that can all be labeled. And uh, it's really easy to turn on and off the different layers. So you can see how like lights and shrubs and other things like that, it just looks a little bit different. For me, it's a little bit more user friendly. So there's also a button up here where you can automatically hide those buttons or not. But I like the way that these look now as opposed to the way they looked before. I think there's some other things floating around in here too that uh, have just made things a little bit better in this new version. All right, so that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Like I said, I think there's a lot of cool stuff in this release. I'm really happy about this and I want to play around with these features more. I will be creating tutorials for the new features on my rendering channel. So make sure you go over there to the rendering essentials. I will link to that in the notes down below. Subscribe over there if you're interested in more in-depth rendering tutorials. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this new version. Uh, what do you think about the features? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.